Welcome back. Now, before the Ukraine crisis, the economy faced multiple challenges, including unemployment, a weak currency, and insecurity. The situation has worsened the high cost of living and affected employees' finances and purchasing power. Findings show that 90% of Nigerians who have faced an increased cost of living are cutting their spending on essential and non-essential items. This has resulted in financial stress, decreased purchasing power, lower job satisfaction, and higher job mobility and migration rates. Uh, joining me now to discuss uh, further is uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, public affairs analyst and travel enthusiast. Of, he has visited over 15 countries, including the United Kingdom, South Africa, Turkey, Mauritius, Qatar, among many others for work and, of course, leisure. He has a first degree uh, from the Kaduna Polytechnic, Nigeria, and second degree from the University of the People, Pasadena, California, United States of America. Thanks for joining me, Mohammed. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Thanks for inviting. Uh, Mohammed, it is really very, very shocking that over 50% uh, uh, of Nigerians uh, would rather just want to leave the country because of uh, you know, the issues are uh, bedeviling, uh, issues of uh, uh, high cost of living and other issues that are not even making life uh, or living worse than what in the country. When you saw that report, um, what did you really make out of it? Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's quite unfortunate, but um, again, we must understand that uh, people, I mean, Nigerians in this case, are not just uh, uh, jackpine like we use the <laughs> language. They're not just yeah. uh, migrating due to economic issues. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not really true if we think uh, Nigerians are migrating all because of economic issues. There are so many other issues that are uh, entwined, I mean, in the migration uh, crisis. Now, now, if you if, if 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 you allow me, I can tell you categorically that even though the report made mention of uh, professionals, there are three categories of um, uh, of migrants of Nigerian migrants. One is uh, the report actually uh, you know captures well the professionals. I mean the doctors, uh, the healthcare professionals, the the ITs, the IT professionals. You know that was what is the in thing now in the world. You know. Uh, those people, because they are not uh, well catered for in Nigeria. For instance, even uh, a consultant and a thousand dollars. That's even if, if up to if you calculate. I mean, using the black market rate, and far less than a thousand dollars a month. While I mean, I know Saudi Arabia comes to Nigeria twice a year to conduct, uh, you know, examinations for our medical practitioners. And they pay them at least, I mean, for entrance, they pay them nothing less than 3,000 plus uh, USD per, per, per month and so on. And you don't even want to talk about the, the UK, which is far, far uh, more than that, you know. So that is one category, the professionals. But there's another category, which is, uh, I mean, the middle class. I know of so many bankers. That's why I mentioned earlier that it's not just all about economic issues. I mean, what people migrate for actually also, I mean, Nigerians include security, includes you know greener pastures and future for their unborn kids people think a lot about that because you see what's happening in nigeria you are kind of skeptical what does the future hold if i'm married if i give birth to one or two kids will they be able to make it in this country and so on and so forth if you go to places probably like canada and uk you have uh, to some extent public schools free education even in canada you are paid for having your your kids going to school and so on and so forth. So those are the 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 the, the you know the middle class people who are bankers. I know of a regional uh, managing director of a new generation bank who you know who migrated. He's earning well according to the pay here in Nigeria, but he's looking he was looking at the future of his kids and his unborn kids. You know, so those are that, that's the, that's the second one. The last one, uh, what I've seen is uh, uh you know the downtrodden and people who are exceptionally talented. Uh, you, you find out that in our various universities and higher, institu in higher institution of learning, you find that people uh, you know who, who graduated with uh, upper class, who graduated first class, but they do not have the means to further their education. Uh, the U.S., particularly, and even the U.K. and even Canada and some other countries in Europe have you know have these plans in place to poach and you know to steal. Let me use the word apology, but to steal some of this talent. 
and grant them uh, what's it called a scholarship, tuition fee scholarship. They give them stipends, and when they go there to train and become professionals, nobody thinks about Nigeria. So these are the category of people that I feel uh, uh, you know uh, have been making the migration. Uh, you know, have, have been captured in the migration crisis uh, across Nigeria. Okay, uh, so Mohammed, uh, well, let's, since we're looking at um, the business angle, because uh, this is a business show, let's stay with the professionals, uh, which represents about 52%. Um, now, it is worrisome that, uh, you know, uh, sectors such as um, the information technology, education, even um, the medical uh, sectors uh, actually live in the country. But what can we really do to remedy this situation? Because like you have rightly said, IT is actually a very big spender, uh, a huge um, income earner. Uh, is it like we have failed to recognize or to appreciate uh, the homegrown talents that we have? Can't we begin to uh, maybe review their remuneration or something? Yes, you are right. Um, remuneration is very important. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, a professor of medicine in Nigeria still earns probably around one thousand dollars and so on. If you convert it to Nigerian naira, which is shocking, you know. So uh, with the high inflation rates, uh, high cost of living, and so on and so forth, how do you expect uh, such a professional, probably who have put in more than twenty to thirty years, uh, you know, in, in practice, to survive? So you are right, remuneration is very key. And then aside remuneration, I think what is also very important is the, uh, is the, uh, <clears throat> is the conducive environment for practice. Mm. You know, for instance, go to our hospitals, <laughs> you go to uh, the, the, the condition of practice is very worrisome, is very shocking. We are still riddled with uh, obsolete, uh, uh, you know, equipment here and there. Uh, the world has left off behind here and there and so on. So uh, aside remuneration, what I think is also important is the condition of practice is, mm. you know, make the environment very conducive for these practitioners. If you go to IT as well, it's the same. You know, you have people who are, for instance, you, you, you remember the, during the, the cash crunch, I mean, earlier this year in Nigeria, the banks were overwhelmed because there was this rumor, and I think it's true, that majority of the IT professionals, I mean, in the IT department of major, of our major banks, fled away, you know, because of the poor package they they, they, they have. So they feel they have a, a, a greener pasture abroad. So I think these are key issues that we must look at, that we must revisit in order to make our country a better place and ensure that our professionals stay back at home to develop the country. Okay, good. Good thing you have said uh, the issues of, uh, you know, infrastructure and, of course, um, the right condition to work, you know, which is not really uh, the best uh, when, when we actually look at uh, what um, happens in other climate now. But we have a new dispensation. We have a new administration. And a whole lot of eyes are on, uh, you know, President Bolatinibu to actually revamp the nation's economic um, sphere, you know, uh, from uh, the issues of um, labor to the issues of um, oil and gas. He has met a whole lot of times with um, stakeholders uh, from the, um, those um, sectors. But looking at it right now, what should, the, should, the, uh, should be done in the immediacy? Most of these things cannot really be handled um, head on at once. You know, but uh, if we were to start, just where do we start from? Yeah, that's, it's, it's very key that the, the current administration uh, led by President uh, Bola Ahmed Tunbu uh, begin from you know, having the right and key people in position of power. I tell you, it was shocking that uh, during the eight year of President uh, Buhari, I'm sorry to say, we had uh, almost an, a seven something or 80 year old in the Ministry of Science and Technology. Oh, come on. Uh, I'm not saying Ogunaya Onu is, is, is not capable, but come on. There are so many things that is happening in the world at the moment that probably his generation do not understand. You know, so you need to have the key technocrat, handling certain and key ministries. That is the right way to go. Like you rightly mentioned, we can't, you know, tackle everything at a spot. But what is important is that we begin and we begin and we begin right. And how do we begin right is to have the key people. You must ensure that technocrats, professionals, not politicians, please, mm. are appointed into key ministries, key positions like science and technology, labor, communications, and so on. People who understand the game. People who understand modernities, yeah. you know. So if we do this, I tell you, because we have the policies, 
It's not about maybe our laws or, uh, or what have you. We have the policies that is ju just needed more of impl implementation and so on and so forth. Mm. So what I think is important for this new administration is to start by having key individuals, professionals, mm. people who have done it, people who have seen it and, you know, have tackled problems, you know, uh, of such nature at the hems of affairs. And by so doing, I tell you, we can begin to move forward. Okay, uh, Mohammed. As we round off now, we talked about um, IT. We talked about uh, you know education. Also talked about um, medicine. But it is also uh, what you have notes to mention really that uh, professions like um, marketing and public relations, uh, which you represent, uh, and of course, some um, advertising and uh, are also part of this. One would have thought that uh, our public relations experts uh, would actually want to talk more about paradigm uh, shifts and uh, paradigm changes to actually uh, work on the minds of Nigerians so that we can actually begin to maybe appreciate uh, what we have in as much as uh, we might not have be there, maybe just stay back and probably hope that um, things might change. But some people, they just don't believe in the future of Nigeria anymore. As a PR professional, what would you say? Yeah, it's quite unfortunate, really, but again, there is an arm of government that is actually charged with this responsibility. I know there is the National Orientation Agency, but uh, if I may throw the question back to you, when was the last time you, you saw or heard anything from that agency? That is a statutory agency created by government to enlighten Nigerians, to educate Nigerians, you know, to help Nigerians understand the policies of government and help Nigerians probably in terms of difficulty to understand what government is doing, what the citizens need to do to assist the government, and what everybody needs to do, the government and the people, to make sure we have a better country. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that arm of that important arm of government, which probably I think is part of the Ministry of Information, if I'm not mistaken now, you know, has been dormant for years. And these, these people get allocations. If not, I'm, I'm sure monthly allocations either from the presidency or from the budget, they, they get budgetary allocations doing for, for, for nothing. So this, it, it, if, I may, if I may answer your question directly, yes, despite the fact that, yeah, you know, the media, just like you're doing, what we are doing now is actually also enlightenment, you know, trying to uh, do our bit. But I think for those people who have been given the statutory power and the monetary and, and, and the budget to do this job, they need to come. Uh, they, they need to do it right. You know, like we said, the National Orientation Agency have been very dormant over the years. I think this is the right time for them to come out blazing to tell Nigerians. I mean, educate and enlighten Nigerians, particularly on this syndrome. Like you said, fifty-two percent. Come on, it's it's shocking that people want to leave their country, their country of birth. You know, their country where they have their family and they, they just want because they just want to to, to go abroad. It's, it's really shocking. You know, so I think it's important that. Um, but the National Orientation Agency uh, do their job, and, and they do it well. And yes, perhaps for all of us Nigerians as well, to have faith and contribute our little quota in the development of our country. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I have been speaking with uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, a public uh, relations consultant. Thanks for all of your useful inputs um, all the time on PLOS TV Africa. We do appreciate your time. All right, that's the size of the show for uh, today. And of course, indeed, uh, this week, uh, Business Insights uh, will return to your screen again, same time on Monday morning. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching and do have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.